I took the C-Risk exam by Saka, and I passed. I was this close to not making this video. And to be honest with you, it is not because I failed, because obviously I passed, but it's just because, um, well, I, to be honest, I only studied for a week. It wasn't really originally my intentions. I'll explain why in a minute, but yeah, I, I only studied for a week. It's heavily based on the fact that I've been doing risk management for a long time. So I really understood the assignment going into the exam. I knew what I needed to study for. I knew what it was about, uh, but we'll get into all of that. It's just at the end of the day, uh, pass or fail. I told you guys I'd make a video for everything and share my entire journey with you. So there's no way I couldn't make this video. I had to get it out. And so let's talk about the exam. For those of you who are unaware, CRISC stands for Certified in Risk and Information Systems Control. And it is currently at SACA's like third most popular certification. Definitely the most popular one by a mile is the CISA. And then from a security standpoint, the CISM is usually the ones that people would try to get first. CRISC wasn't even an exam that I had heard of until a couple of years ago. And I'm not looking for another job, but I always am looking to see what positions are out there and what these companies are looking for. And what I'm starting to see more and more, of course, uh, the CISSP, CISM, and CISA are the main three that people are usually looking for, but I'm starting to see more and more companies list C-Risk, and, and I can tell you why. C-Risk is... Uh, as it says, the, the whole thing is based around risk management and really with the continuous changes in technology and now AI and other things, people are starting to get more and more serious about uh, you know, how important it is to look into security and to really look at things from a risk management perspective. And that, I think that's the reason why this is gaining popularity. And to be honest with you, based off the information that it teaches, it's a pretty good certification. I mean, honestly, I... This is just my opinion, but I think that it would technically provide you more value than the CISM, but that would be value based off of knowledge, not necessarily credibility in the certification world right now. If you're only going to get one of them, you should definitely do CISM over C-Risk, but it's still a really good certification to have given all the, the good information that it teaches you. I'll quickly talk about the three things that I used to pass this exam. Number one was a video course on Udemy by Hemang Doshi. Now, I will say that I've used Hemang Doshi for both the CISM and the CISA, but this was a little bit different. So Hemang Doshi, like, I, I think that his, his style is pretty unique and it really helped me for the CISM. It helped me as well for the CISA, even though I failed it, but when I got to C risk, I, I started to get a, a bit tired of his his style. Uh, so what he does is he's very straight to the point. He will tell you what you need to know, but he typically will do a video talking about it and then he'll do quizzes and then you'll have to do a quiz. And it's like that over and over and over again for, for many, many hours of his course. And the problem is, while that's helpful, it also, you know, having a situation where it keeps stopping you to, for you to manually go in and do a quiz, it kind of takes me out of that flow. Like I like to watch, you know, a video series and just learn the course. If I need to stop and take notes, great. But the way that he has it, you are forced to stop and do the quizzes. And I typically end up skipping those quizzes anyway. Um, so yeah, this time I used it for a couple of hours and then it started to get stale. So it's still a good resource. If if you already have a subscription to Udemy, you should definitely use it. But this one is the one that I use the least out of the three. The second resource that I used was a LinkedIn learning video course by a guy named Gerard Brennan. Now, this is somebody I've never heard of before. And I typically stick with people that I know or people that are highly recommended. But I decided to give this person a chance uh, just because I wasn't really filling Hameng Doshi this time around. And I'm glad that I did. I think that he's a pretty good resource. Again, it's a guy I never heard of, but it's it's like a almost a nine hour course. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I think he teaches the material very well. Um, I'm not 100% sure if it would be enough to pass the exam, but uh, I will say that I did learn from watching his course and that was pretty cool. Uh, I think he explains it very well. He has a lot of real world examples based on his experience in the industry. And um, it is a, a source that I would highly recommend personally. If I was gonna take it all over again for whatever reason, I would go back and I would watch his course again because I actually enjoyed watching it and I feel like I got a lot of value out of that. The last resource that I used was the same as I used for the CISA and the CISM and that is 
the official ISACA QAE database. And if you don't know what that is, long story short, it just gives you, I think this one has about 600 questions, which is actually significantly less than like the CISA. The CISA was a thousand questions. This one's only 600, but it's very, very helpful. At least it's helpful if you know the material already. Uh, remember that it's not really meant for people who are brand new, who have no experience or no knowledge. It is kind of helpful in a sense that like, it'll ask you the, the question and then it'll give you the four answers. And then when you answer it, it'll tell you why all of those answers are either right or wrong. But when you're trying to learn this stuff, when you're trying to prepare for the exam, if you haven't taken any other courses and you don't know a whole lot about risk management, this isn't really money well spent. Um, you're probably going to struggle a bit on the actual exam. If you know the material, though, then good. This will help you to get the ISACA mindset, to get an understanding of how they ask their questions, and to really understand the type of questions that you're going to get on the actual exam. You might be wondering, why the hell did I take the exam after only studying for one week? That was not my intention. It was not the original plan. It's actually just kind of what ended up happening. So I do kind of want to explain that. In order for me to properly explain this, you need to understand when I took the exam. So I had taken the CompTIA CASP exam, passed it, I felt great. But after about maybe four to six hours, I was like, okay, I need to start studying for something else. And I didn't know what I wanted to study for. So I, I sat and I thought for a long time and then I decided, okay, I feel good. Let's go ahead and buy some study material for C-Risk and start studying for C-Risk. Now, what I did was, ISACA allows you to schedule an exam uh, and then you can always reschedule within 48 hours. You don't have to pay anything. It's not like a penalty. So I knew that I was going to be off the next week for both J July 3rd and July 4th, which was a Monday and a Tuesday. So I just quickly bought the voucher, went ahead and put, I wanted to put July 4th, but I scheduled it for July 3rd because July 4th didn't have any availability. And so I was like, I'm just going to put something here to just motivate me to go ahead and study for it. I, I wasn't expecting to actually take it on July 3rd. However, after sitting and studying for a whole week, I was like, I might be able to pass this. I was thinking to myself like, okay, it's been you know a week of me studying. And I was like, well, I, I really understand the material. I don't think waiting an entire extra week is going to help me to understand the material more. I know risk management pretty well. And so that's the reason why I decided it was already on the calendar. I did it to help keep me motivated, but it's on the calendar. So let's let's do it. Let's try it. And look, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> this, is, this is the truth here. I was more nervous um, about having to make a, a video telling you guys that I failed the C-Risk than I was taking the whole exam itself because I, I felt like it would have been really, really awkward for me to come up here and make a video and be like, hey guys, I, I tried to take a C-Risk and I failed. Oh yeah, I only studied for a week. That that would have just been, I, I wasn't, I was, I didn't want to make that video. So I was nervous about it, but at the same time, again, I really felt like continuing to study wasn't going to do anything for me. I really felt like I knew what I knew and whatever I didn't know, I wasn't going to figure it out. So that's why I took it. Oh yeah. If you guys are curious about how the results work and, and all that, that whole process, basically you take the exam, you immediately get told right after the exam is finished, whether you passed or failed, but that's it. Uh, from there, you have to do an application. I did the application the next day. It got approved the day after that. Uh, about a week later, I was told, hey, congratulations, you passed. And then I was able to see my certificate in their system. But it took another week before they actually gave me the score report. So you can usually end up waiting like two weeks or so before you actually get all of your official results. Uh, so with that being said, yeah, I passed. The results are I passed. Did I pass it by one question or did I get every single question right? I'm not going to tell you because it doesn't matter. All right. So as far as tips are concerned, I don't have a lot of them. Really, as I always say, you really need to understand the ISACA mindset. You need to understand how it is that they think and how they feel that security and risk management should be handled. Remember, your, I hate to say it this way, your opinion doesn't matter. Okay. You're taking an ISACA exam. You need to understand ISACA's way of doing things. Now, honestly, I think this particular one isn't that bad. 
Um, I think the the answers and stuff that they had for the CISM was much more controversial in my opinion, but this one really focuses around risk management and really looking at you know different risks as it relates to the business. You still want to support the business. Um, business typically comes first, but since you're sitting in that like risk advisor, risk management, risk officer type of role, you need to understand just how much those regulatory requirements and stuff matter and the risks associated with following them versus choosing not to follow them. As the name implies, this exam is heavily based off of risk. So what does that mean? It means you need to understand a lot of risk concepts. You need to understand risk assessments, risk matrix, risk treatment tables, risk registers. You need to understand heat maps, the difference between quantitative and qualitative analysis. These are things that are important. And I'll be honest with you, when I first started my career, not first started my career, but when I first got into like security management, this was a concept that was very, very difficult for me because I had never really been exposed to it like that. Like somebody can say, oh, well, yeah, I know risk management, but when you actually have to get in there and do it, it's a lot different than you might think. So just know that those are things that are very important. To be honest with you, if you've already taken the CISM, this it's going to heavily help you because a lot of that stuff is covered here. Remember, this isn't a technical exam. So if you've done the CISM recently, you already have the ISACA mindset, uh, learn the stuff that you need to learn for risk management. And overall, you, you should be good to go. But yeah, that's it for me. So if you guys are going to be taking the exam anytime soon, best of luck to you. Um, I am not planning on taking any other like IT exams for quite a while. I'm actually starting uh, college in about a week and a few days. So uh, that's really what I'm going to be focusing on. But anyways, until my next video, you guys take care.